momentum. My name is Shelby. I'm one of the coordinators here and we have some special guests this week. As many of you know, seniors, high school seniors are graduating this week. And so we wanted to take the opportunity uh, to bring them up on stage for service and to send them off because unfortunately we are in the middle of a pandemic and we can't meet face to face uh, for service. You know, most of you guys are meeting in your small groups tonight, which is great. Uh, but we really want to take this time to celebrate this class and just all the hard work that they've done. Um, this class has a special place in my heart. Uh, these kids were sophomores going into sophomore year when I first started three years ago. Um, and most of them have been here for that whole time. Ethan is like our original Momentum kid. <laughs> And then Ayana was another one that was already here when I started. Um, Yelena was soon after. And then Siani joined us this past year and just has been such a lovely addition. And we also have Jaslyn graduating who couldn't be here today and Luke as well. And so we've had several seniors graduate in the past. You know, we have some juniors and sophomores coming up, but just something about these students here, man, like you guys have a special place in my heart. I'm not gonna lie, being honest, got some favorites, but I, we just love the opportunity to get to know each and every one of you. And I think this is just a beautiful celebration of this culmination of where we end up with these kids. We've gotten to walk along you guys for the past couple of years, gone through some really crazy scenarios with you and have just been able to be the support system, to be uh, a listening ear, uh, a shoulder to cry on. Um, but more than anything else, I think watching each of you guys grow in your faith, the friendships that you've developed out of momentum and just the people that you've invited and brought in and just the way that you guys go out and spread the light of momentum to others. Like it's just, it's an honor for me. It's an honor for Mike and Amber to get to witness that and just be a part of what God is doing here. Um, so pretty much that's all I have to say, but we just wanna take time. Uh, we have gifts that we're gonna give the seniors as a thank you for momentum. Um, but most importantly, we want to pray for you guys. Uh, that's a tradition we have here for our leaders. We've done it for students in the past. And so now we just want the opportunity uh, to pray for you guys now as well. So I will kick it off and then Big Mike is gonna close and then we're gonna conclude with our last service of 2020. Well, the school year, not the entire 2020. I hope we come back in the fall, that's the plan. <laughs> I hope so, oh gosh, okay, let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for these students, Lord. Uh, for Ethan, for Yelena, for Ayana, for Siani, for Jaslyn and Luke, Lord. Just that you have brought them to momentum, Lord. Uh, that we've had the opportunity uh, to just guide them, Lord. To draw them closer to you. Uh, to ask hard questions. Um, to go through tough life things together, Lord. And I am just so excited for this next step that they take. All of them um, are making the decision to go to college. Most of them are choosing to go to distant places, Lord. Uh, but you have such beautiful plans for all of their lives. Uh, I just want them to know how loved they are here and that even as they go, there's community here supporting them. Um, always a safe place to come back to. Even if their family may not stay in Minot, they have a church family here that they could come and, and find love and find support, Lord. But I just pray that you would surround them with community wherever they go, um, that they can continue to share your light with others, um, and that when people meet them, Lord, that they know there's something different about them and that that seed was planted here, Lord. And just they would continue to grow, they would continue to seek you, and just that you would be alongside them in whatever they choose to do with their life, Lord. Uh, we love them so much. We're wishing the best and just pray to continue to be a support for them in all their life adventures. Yeah, dear Father, just thank you for uh, these friends that I've made here. And I pray that you would bless them. As uh, Shelby said, God, go before them, prepare relationships of uh, people that they can be encouraged by to know you and to grow. And I just pray that um, that would be something that really is, uh, sticks out to them in this season is, is to look back on what you've done and, and, and be expectant about what you're going to do in the future, Father, and just uh, help them know you more and help them um, know themselves more, Father. Uh, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Hey, guys. Well, 
It's Big Mike here. I'm so excited to be with you this week um, at Momentum. We are closing out our school year at Momentum, as many of you are going through all the crazy things that's, uh, with school and picking up your stuff. And uh, some of the seniors that we just had on stage with us are going to be graduating. Just a lot of life changes, exciting things happening. Um, and we're excited for what God has in store for the future. And so today, we're going to be closing out a message series um, called What's the T? What's the T? And we'll get to that in a moment. Before we do that, I just wanted to uh, say a few things. Uh, many of you that have built a relationship with me, um, have uh, it's been fun. I, you know that my life is going to be changing uh, very soon, as, as all of ours have been. Um, but I'm actually moving to Fargo with my family to start a church. Rescue House Church is what it's called. Um, but with that, there's this bittersweetness, right? You know, there's the excitement of what, what God is going to do there, but there's also that um, mourning of, hey, all my friends and uh, people that I love are here too. And so um, just wanted to acknowledge that and say, you know, I, I feel that. And I wish that we could be here uh, together in person. That's something I'm struggling with throughout all this is not being able to connect with you guys. But um, I've said this in the past. I would love to continue relationships with you guys if that's possible. If you want to reach out, um, you can always... Uh, shoot me a message on Facebook or Instagram. Um, my phone number will post it in the, the comments below, um, and you can get a hold of me. But just wanted to say that I'm still available. I'm going to be in North Dakota, um, but it's been an honor to be with you guys and to encourage you. And I'm excited to see, actually, I believe God's going to do big things in your lives with this new director who's going to be the right person that's going to encourage you guys in your faith journey. And so um, I'm just excited for that. I hope you can get your hearts right and get excited for that as well. Um, but I just wanted to encourage you guys with that a little bit. Um, so we are um, closing things out. This, this series, What's the T? And I subtitled this series, um, Life Lessons with Big Mike. Because as I was thinking, oh man, what do we want to talk about? We had some things on our schedule of what we were going to preach about. But uh, with everything going on and uh, just the state of our world, I felt like, man, I really want to encourage uh, our, our family, our Momentum family, with a few things that I know that have just been foundational in my life um, over the past 30 years. And so um, we've been doing this together the last two weeks. Um, we've been talking about um, prayer. Um, we've been talking about, you know, just um, engaging with other people that may be um, in a relationship with God and how important that is. And so this week, we're kind of closing things out with a, a life lesson, um, and this is what it is. It's look to God when you don't know what to do. Look to God when you don't know what to do. That's something that I've learned, um, you know, multiple occasions. And uh, I think it's really an interesting lesson for us in this season. So that's why I was like really excited about it um, when I felt like I was in, uh, preparing me for this. Um, but I just, you know, want to start off tonight's, today's um, discussion, tonight's message with this um, question, how many um, of you guys have been in situations in your life where you didn't know what to do? Just think about that for a minute. How many of you have been in, in situations in your life where you didn't know what to do? You know, I wrote down a few things that I, I could remember that I think are maybe examples of situations where, you know, I just didn't know what to expect. I really didn't know which way to go. Um, it was very, um, you know, nerve wracking and there was a lot of nerves going on, but uh, one of the things I thought of was the first day of, of sixth grade. Some of you guys um, have, are leaving your, uh, have left that first day of, of sixth grade when you um, entered into a new school, some of you, right? That is just this unknown that you experienced, right? Uh, how about the first day of high school? It's crazy, right? Like just a whole different world. And there was so much uncertainty. Um, first track or band practice, right? First dating relationship, whoa, <laughs> right? There's another situation, first job, maybe the first sickness in, in, in a family member or even the death of a family member, right? Uh, you know, the first living through a pandemic, like all these situations, right? And they these present us with these questions of what to do, how to react. And I think... Um, it's really a challenge for us if we, you know, look to the world, if we look to the people even around us sometimes for that answer. Like, what do I do? Right? I don't know what to do. And I just wanted to simplify it for us in this, in this life lesson that we really just need to look to God when we don't know what to. And I've learned that, um, you know, the hard way throughout my life. And so 
You know, think about these situations. Think about situations in your life um, where you didn't know what to do. Well, the reality is that you and I, we have two choices in those moments, right? We have, we can look to God or we can look to ourselves. Right? When we don't know what's down the road, we can either you know, try to figure it out on ourselves and like, you know, work it into submission, or we can look to God and see what he might want to show us about this situation or the future. And so uh, I'm, I'm kind of preaching to myself today because right now I'm leaving something stable to, to a place where there's uncertainty, right? And so I can relate to those of you that are you know, maybe moving or that are seniors or that your lives are, are changed a lot by the pandemic, um, or other circumstances. And so, um, but either choice, either thing that we choose, whether it's we look to God or we look to ourselves, it will produce an outcome, right? And those outcomes will be very different. And, and I've learned that um, when I do look to God, I've had, you know, things happen in my life that are beyond anything that I could have dreamed about, which I think has really um, encouraged me in this life lesson, in this truth, is that, you know, when I do end up looking to God rather than myself, Man, he has just blown up my dreams, and they have been so much, my life has been so much sweeter in light of that. And, you know, I was kind of thinking about a, a helpful way for us to kind of understand this. Um, and there's this analogy um, that we've, we see in the Bible, and we'll read about it in a, in a minute. But think about um, dark and light, right? Or night and day, right? This is a really a clear picture for us to understand these two choices that we have, right? You know, darkness, it makes things hidden to the naked eye. Wait, wait, we need lights. Like, that's why we have headlines on our cars, in the cities. Like, right? Uh, darkness, it makes things unclear. Well, light, it does the opposite. It actually illuminates things that are unseen, right, to the naked eye. So we can see clearly what to do or where to go. And I think this is really interesting, you know, when we apply this to ourselves. Like, when we are in a situation where we don't know what to do, when we look to ourselves, we're actually just choosing to stay in the dark, right? Because uh, in that place, we can't figure it out on our own. We might try, but we're still um, not illuminating anything around us, right? We're kind of staying in this place of darkness. And, um, you know, one example is, you know, in a crisis moment in your life, right? We talked about these situations you might have experienced, whether it's starting a new, at a new school or going through a, a trial or a, a sickness or a death in the, in the family, right? These situations, um, they can really present us with this question, what do I do? And when we do that, when we look to ourselves, ultimately we could get deeper into the, the problem, right? In the sense that, you know, if we're, you know, sad, we probably get more sad. Or if we're depressed, we probably get more depressed. Or if we're anxious, we get more anxious. Because what we're doing is we're trying to solve the problem on our own, and we just can't do that, right? We just, we can't figure it out on our own. And so, but when we choose to look at God, we choose to walk in, in the light, right? He ends up illuminating things around us that we could never see on our own. You know, in a crisis moment, right, he is actually starting to shed light on the situation in ways that we never even thought uh, might be, there might be some benefits to the situation or might be some options or things or perspectives that we could have never seen if we just focused on ourselves, and focused on how we were feeling or how we could solve that situation. And so this concept, like I said, is spoken about in Scripture. If we look at the book of John in chapter 8, Jesus, he explains how uh, he is the light for you and me. And so I think this is really sweet for us. And so I want to read this to you guys. Um, John 8, um, 12, it says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. I want you to sink in, so I want to read it again. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Such a powerful verse. Um, I think it kind of gets looked over sometimes and we can quote it, but the, the power and um, the truth behind it is so encouraging for us, especially in moments when we don't know what to do or situations um, where we don't know where to look. Because we see three things in this passage. We see the first thing is that, that God is the light of the world. He said, I am the light of the world, right? He, he exposes things that we could never see on our own. When we sit in our own state, uh, looking to ourselves to solve the problem, like he is the opposite of that. He ends up exposing things that we could not see in our life and areas that we need to grow or that he wants to um, remind us of how much he loves us. 
Um, we would never discover those things. And so this is really powerful truth for us, right? And it, it, it helps us to know what to do, right? So when we have these moments when we don't know what to do, um, we look to this and we see, hey, God's the light of the world. So if I just go after God, if I go after Jesus, I'm going to find an answer. And that's just a, a really simple truth, right? And it can even be hard for us to uh, take ownership of at times. Um, but he kind of goes on in that verse. He says, um, you know, whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness. So we see here that, uh, that you know, looking to God actually illuminates the dark, right? Um, if we have a dark area in our life, you know, um, and we bring God into that area, he's able to illuminate it, right? And, I, and many of you know, uh, parts of my story struggles with depression, anxiety. When I invite God into those moments, he's actually illuminated and used those things for good, you know? Uh, and I think that's really a sweet thing is, is that what God does too? And so if we do look to him, even in a situation that we've struggled with for, you know, maybe months or years, um, and we invite him into it, we look to him in that moment we, that we don't know what to do, he ends up illuminating something that's even more beautiful that he was trying to teach us all along. And then the third thing that we see um, is that looking to God allows us to walk with God now and forever, right? He says, but you will have the light of life. What does that mean? What he's saying here is you're going to be with me for eternity. And that is a question that all human beings are asking themselves, right? They're asking themselves, well, what happens after I die? Right? And we, we wrestle with that question. No matter where you're at on your faith journey, you wrestle with that question. But Jesus is saying that, you know, the light of life, it's, a, it's spiritual nourishment. It's salvation. And so when we look to him and we, um, you know, walk in his light, we are going to be with him now and forever. And I think that's such a, a reassurance that we need in those moments, in these situations that we encounter, especially pandemics, that we're like, uh-oh, the world's coming to an end. No, God's got it. He's got us now and forever, right? It just gives us a hope about the future. And I think that's something that we all need to um, just focus in on, especially in moments when we feel like we don't know what to do. And so that's this life lesson in a nutshell, that when we don't know what to do, we look to God. And I've learned that and I've practiced it and it has changed my life and I believe it will change yours. And so I want to encourage you guys with that as we close this series out. And I challenge you uh, to do that in more areas of your life this week, right? There might be areas that you've kind of compartmentalized and said, hey, God, like, I'm going to give you this area, but I'm not going to give you that area, right? I'm going to give you um, my, my parents, you know, we're going to talk to God, uh, talk about God together, but I'm not going to give you my friendships. I'm not going to look to you to find friends that might be pursuing you or have a relationship with you. Like, but what if you end up taking a step of faith and looking to God in that area of your life, right? What would he say? And I just want to challenge you with that. There's probably other areas, but don't compartmentalize God. When he has things for you, um, you know, he wants to make your life abundant, right? And, and he even encourages us in this verse, like, we are going to walk in the light, right? And we'll never walk in darkness. And so just let that um, kind of encourage you this week. And um, as we end this school year out, we're going to have some things coming up this summer for you that I want you guys to take notice of. We're going to have a calendar that we're going to be sharing. We're going to have two um, summer events that are going to be fun that I hope you guys can make it to. Um, but with that, I just want to pray for all of you guys and close the, this message out. God, we just thank you for everybody watching. Um, thank you for all that you're doing in all of our lives and have done in the past, Father. Um, God, I pray for everybody here that we would just look to you in situations when we don't know what to do. God, I pray uh, specifically for students that are struggling right now um, with circumstances that seem overwhelming, Father. Would you give them your peace? Would you give them reminders through this, your word here that um, you are with them? And then when they look to you, you will give them um, light and you will be with them. And so God, we just uh, pray for them today um, and pray for us to just um, be strong this summer. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, Momentum, we've got one more thing tonight, and Big Mike wishes we weren't doing it, of course, but we have to. Uh, so as you may or may not know, this is Big Mike's last 
Wednesday with us. And what a bittersweet way to go with COVID and everything happening. Um, but we just want to take this opportunity uh, to just speak a few words and then to pray for Mike as well, like we did for the seniors earlier. Um, because like I said, we are such a, we have such a heart for sending people off that momentum because we truly believe the investment that we're making here. Um, and just to be able to get to know Big Mike over this time, um, man, I usually don't get emotional, but I might get emotional. <laughs> uh, but we are just so thankful for Big Mike and his leadership. Um, momentum would not be what it is today <laughs> without him and advocating for us. And every leader and every student that has come through this program knows that. And we know that God is so much bigger than us. And we know that God will see us through this transition um, with a new director, um, with new staff, but it doesn't mean that we don't grieve losses either. Um, and losing Mike is a loss, um, but we're so excited for what God is doing in his life uh, with Elizabeth, with their children, going to Fargo um, to plant a church. Um, just so grateful for the time we have had with them. Um, and especially during these uncertain times and doing online services and doing online Zoom calls and drive-in small groups. Um, but just faithfully, I think if there's one thing I want to share is Big Mike always looked for opportunity to reach students. And we had some sketchy winter blizzard nights <laughs> that we still showed up at the building. Um, but to see every student that walked through those doors, I always left those nights thinking, man, what courage Mike had to say, no, we still have to show up. Um, and that's what I'm taking away from his leadership of showing up for you, the students, you, the parents, you, the leaders, um, because God uses us to reach others and to build those relationships. So I'm just so thankful for that. And I'm going to stop talking and let Amber now talk. <laughs> Well, Shelby pretty much said it all. Um, we're so thankful for Big Mike and his influence at Momentum. And him and Elizabeth are going to be missed by a lot of people. But um, we just wanted to pray for him and his family as we send them off into this new chapter. So bow your heads with me. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for Mike um, and his influence here at Momentum and just that he led so well and um, he cared for each of his leaders and students. Father, we just pray that you would be with him as they go into this next chapter of their lives um, and that you would just bless them and you would open doors for them and that, um, that you would prepare a way um, as they transition over to Fargo, that you would give them the connections that they need. Um, and that, we, that they would just have a smooth transition. Lord, I just thank you for Mike's friendship, for his leadership, uh, and just the way he's encouraged all of us, um, present leaders and students, former leaders and students. And I just know that the people who have yet to come are going to feel his influence still, Lord, because you've uh, worked through all of us because of him. I uh, just pray for blessing in this new endeavor, uh, that you would surround them with a community like Momentum, uh, just encouraging, uplifting, doing the hard things, working hard, showing up, um, and just be with them as they go through this new adventure. I just pray that they always have a special place here, um, a church home here as well, and that they feel that, um, and just that you'll be with them every step of the way. Uh, we just wish the best uh, and just love them so much, Lord, and just pray that you'll go with them. In your name we pray, amen. And so if you've been touched by Mike, feel free to leave a comment on this service and share a story or just wish him and Elizabeth luck, whatever that looks like for you. Again, it's really weird times that we have to be doing online services and do this, you know, over screens, but there's still opportunity. Um, and then also go and follow Rescue House Church on social media and see what they are doing in their new adventure. We can link it below for you guys as well. But just thank you for your love and support and just stay tuned for what Momentum has planned this summer and we'll just keep, keep keeping on. <laughs> we love you guys and we'll see you soon. Bye.